share this out on Twitter, X, share this out on Facebook, let people know that you are hanging out with Publicly Buzzed here tonight. Feral Friday, baby. We about to launch. That would be good. Yeah, I need to do that. I'm sharing this thing out just a little bit. Everybody else should be doing the same. Sharing this bad boy, repost, whatever the hell Elon Musk is calling it. I don't know. Sharing this out right now in a Discord. And we are about to be with you folks right now. Let's get a countdown going. Let's go. Yeah, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't have the music on for them. They were just hearing me talk. Yeah, they got the music on this one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I see some people hanging out already in there. MJ, Kathy, Holly Berry. What's going on, guys? Joni. Wildside. Kimmy Q. Keystone. Friday. Gentlemen, that's not how that should look at all. Hey, a lot of technical issues. Hold on, I don't even know what the hell that is. Let me delete that. The fuck? Welcome to Fail Friday. I was like, what? Um, thank you guys so much for being here. Appreciate it. See a lot of fine folks already hanging out per usual. Um, yeah, let me just go ahead and bring over our guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Hall. Boom. Hold on, wrong one again. Brandon. Boom. What is up, man? I don't know what that box was. <laughs> What the hell was that? I don't know. It is Halloween. We've got a hunting. Brandon Hall, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> Thank you for being here, What's brother. Up, Appreciate up? it. <laughs> hey, excited to uh, have you. Music City 911 is the podcast this guy hosts and created. And man, it's a it's a doozy. We were all just talking about beforehand. I know Dan's been listening to it as well. And Dude, I wish I would have checked it out earlier. Like and I just now, just today, I started, I dove in and I was like, dude, this is itself, dude, it's so good. And anybody that I was telling that, you know, to check it out, I did give a trigger warning. I was like, listen, this one is out the gate, serious as fuck. Like, let's just, <laughs> but dude, yeah, man, you have an incredible job, dude. Um, before we get into it real quick, I just want to do a couple shout outs here just to see what's going on in chat. I know that I saw something right before we went live here. Uh, just want to take care of that real quick. Laura coming through with $2. Thank you, Laura. Real quick. Let me make sure. First Laura. of all, let me get my stream deck up here. Boom. So we can get you a little bit of a, a sound effect. Those are dead too. Are those? They're not working for you? No, I don't hear them. That's all right though. I can fix that real quick. As long as they do. Give me the loop. Hey. Give me the loop. Yeah, there it is. Oh, it's got an echo. Like. A little bit of an echo for you. Just for you, probably. Probably just for me. What's going on? True Compass Podcast, Andy J, Fuzzy Puff, Susan. Appreciate everybody. Austin Reigns, appreciate you for being here as well. So let me do this one more thing. I want to make sure I get the chat over here. And then we will be officially rocking and rolling. lost that as well where the fuck is the chat thing 
Brandon, if you haven't watched our content, there's a bit of a casual here. We we kind of we kind of just we, have we, a little bit. We trouble dude uh, on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't actually oh, see that. Weird. That's cool. That's kind of how I edit. I go on the fly. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I have to figure that out as we go. All right. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate the hell out of it. Please share this out. Let people know that you're watching Feral Friday. But yeah, dude. Holy shit, man. What a crazy ass job you have, Brandon. Oh, yeah. It, it can be. I'm kind of used to it. I've been doing it for a long time. So 20 years, yeah. right? Uh, 23, actually. Yeah. 23. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah, that is a long time. Um, I, My first question I actually have for you right out the gate, just because I grew up, you know, I'm not exactly sure what your age is, is, is exactly, but I grew up watching Rescue 911 unsolved mysteries yeah did you do the similar did you remember watching those shows yeah i, I watched a little bit of them uh more unsolved mysteries uh back then i around when that was on i was uh, living with my grandparents and they didn't do so much of the rescue 911 but unsolved mysteries is always america's on. most wanted yeah all that stuff yeah i remember uh rescue 911 being re- way more intense like the mm-hmm. vibe of it was real intense it was kind of yeah. like cops right it was yeah, like cops bit. it and- was acted though in the reenactments, the reenactments uh, actually felt oh, that's like right. horror no, movies, no. though. Never mind. Yeah, like little mini horror movies because they were so well done. Um, but no, I'm a, I was way a bigger fan of Unsolved Mysteries too. And usually, because we'll do on here, we'll dive into some aliens, we'll go down some ghost trails, and then of course, true crime and all the horrific shit that is real in our lives. Uh, and I like to like in that I grew up loving Unsolved Mysteries, dude. And yeah, I figured you would as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Robert Stack, he had it going on. Dude, I love that dude, man. He had the <laughs> best voice ever. Oh yeah. Um, since uh, Stevie, since you mentioned, you know, the length of time that Brandon's been working uh, at this job as a as a an operator, a nine one one operator, dude, how like so? What's the turnover like <laughs> at that job? Like, I can't imagine. It's got to be intense as fuck, right? So, oh yeah, is turnover like, pretty high at something it, like that. Really high. It's every everywhere. Like any now one dispatch uh, center is the the turnover is really high. I think I read somewhere that like um, only like three percent of the people who start at now one actually make it to retirement from there. So wow. I mean, it's wow. it's very low. I think in the time I've been there, I've probably seen well over a thousand, maybe even well more than that. People Holy come shit. and go through the door. So yeah. So what is, what do you think it takes to to stick with it or i mean are you for example take you for example are you like somewhat desensitized to oh yeah yeah absolutely that's that's one of the things that just comes after a while and one of the stories i always tell people um you know that when i started people would kind of tell me that like there's a certain point that you'll realize that you're just you know desensitized or like some of your morals that you normally have they're kind of gone and i the, I, I remember the exact call that I had when it happened for me. I was actually, uh, back then we had police dispatch and then fire dispatch. They were completely separate. I was hired as a police dispatcher. And what we would do is if we have a 911 call come in, if they needed an ambulance, we would transfer them upstairs to the fire dispatch. We would stay on the phone to listen to see if there was any need for the police, you know, on whatever it is. If there wasn't, we'd hang up, you know, go on the next call. If there was, we'd listen to what they're saying and try to pick up the details and then after they were done with all their questions, we jumped back in. Well, the one that I had was this woman, uh, she walked in and she found her father passed away and like at, at his house, he was dead on this couch. And I was like, stay on the phone. I'm going to put you to the paramedics center upstairs started. Uh, and you know, when we did that, we hit the mute button. So they are on, we're not, you know, on there anymore. We're just kind of listening that type thing. And they're asking all their questions. She's just bawling her eyes out. I mean, she's, you know, walked in and found her dad dead. And the whole time that this is going on, I'm eating pretzels. So, I mean, it's just, Jeez, yeah. yeah. And then like after the call, it's like, oh, hey, that's, I uh, just hit it. So like I, I was doing it like it was nothing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Intense. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, like, you know, growing up, like me and Stevie have mentioned it before, like, you know, we grew up watching horror movies. We grew up watching, I mean, we rented like Faces of Death and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Going to websites, like if anybody remembers like Steak and Cheese or Rotten.com, where they, they had some insanely graphic stuff, you know. Kind of desensitized checked, us a little bit, right? It definitely desensitized us. I, I mean, we, we may be a little bit, but when it's a real situation, a live situation like that, dude, I don't know. It'd be like, different, dude. It. Like, yeah. yeah thinking about Listen, your job i don't think that i could do that man like it it'd be so intense like i can understand that crazy turnover rate yeah let's say that one thing I've, I've actually went out and uh, we used to have to do like yearly ride-alongs 
and I'd you know go out and ride with a, a cop every year, and I, I did it several times. That wasn't me. <laughs> that was me. Uh, Gypsy is saying Gypsy out. going wild. Yeah, I yeah, had my door, see. actually. I usually don't have this door open, but I have to tonight. Sorry, Brandon. Seeing some of the stuff I, I've uh, seen just on the very few days doing the ride-alongs. I mean, one of the times we got a, a call about a fight that was out in the middle of the street somewhere, and we get over to the place, and the guy's already sitting on the back of an ambulance, and he's, I mean, this dude's huge. He's he's 500 pounds if he's an ounce. And he's, he was just saying that, like, oh, it was just him and his friend were just kind of play fighting they were just wrestling out in the street it wasn't an actual fight and the whole time he's sitting there talking just like i am right now and then i look down and apparently the other guy like kicked him in his ankle and it was a compound fracture his, his foot was literally hanging off of his leg with a piece of skin holding on about that wide and it was just Jeez. dangling there off of his leg and he, wow. he was high on something yeah we were just playing <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude yeah, yeah that's he said the thing. That we were just playing it, it wasn't a big deal yeah that i can only crazy. imagine like yeah you had to be or he was in shock right high and high, probably both high well, and I, in shock. I think it was mostly high <laughs> yeah you probably get a lot of that also oh yeah uh, every people that are just out of their minds and that in the adrenaline still pumping right oh yeah yeah every day yeah there's no way dude like there's no way i could do this job on a daily basis and then like but i mean at the same time you know, being in the true crime community, hell, I mean, and you also are now also trying to do a YouTube channel. You have yeah. a podcast. Yeah. You This is your actual job. So you don't actually get a breather from this almost. You're, no, you're in it all no. the time now. Yeah, it's 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 seriously like all the time. I mean, I uh, the, the little sleep I do get, sometimes I'll wake up like thinking, oh, crap, I, I forgot to put this in the episode or, you know, just it's it's always 24 seven. It seems like sometimes. Yeah, well, we, we and, talk about taking mental breaks from this because, you know, it could be hard to like listen to all this stuff all day or constantly or, you know, doing research or anything, but you don't yeah. take breaks. <laughs> yeah. it's, well, when I, when I do, I, you know, I try to go out and, you know, do stuff, go, you know, eat at a nice restaurant or something like that, or, um, have some drinks somewhere or something like that. And, you know, I, I try to make out. some time. Yep. Yeah. You got to de decompress somehow. I mean, Oh yeah, for sure. It's just so much, man. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. But yeah, hold on. I got some questions I actually want to pull up here as well. Yeah, yeah, fire away. Let me see here. Okay, first of all, I've just got before, you know, I'm sure you have some crazy stories from 23 years of this, and we're going to get into that. But let me see here. Um, so, and we might have actually just touched this. Dan was kind of, what does it take to get into this? But I had a question here. The first week or month of the job, you know, you're actually doing this there had to be a point right I'm, I'm guessing the first week being this much of uh, this intense of a job when you it clicked you're like it's, there's, there's a moment that you see that high turnover right there's a moment where it's either going to be i can do this or can't you know was it the first week first month kind of take me through that when you were like uh, yeah i can totally do this yeah i don't it, think it's, it's going to wear me down it's a little bit different with that it's um because we have the first uh when i started anyway we had uh it was five or six weeks worth of in-class training and then after that you go what they call you just you're on the floor with an, another like a trainer sitting right with you as you're taking the phone calls and you do a three month rotation of all three different shifts that we have. So, um, that's just for the phone portion of it. Like okay. just taking the 911 call. So the person that's with you, they're, they're with you training the entire time. They're watching your keystrokes. They're, you know, uh, listening to the calls, making sure you're saying the right things, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, you go on to radio dispatch training, which is actually way harder than the 911 calls. It's because you're, you know, with a 911 caller, you can say, hang on just a second while I get this typed in or whatever if you need to. But with the radio dispatch, you've got dozens of officers or, you know, fire personnel, whatever like that. And they're always needing something. There's, there's something else. And there's, you can tell them to stand by, but there's always somebody needing something else. So it's, you're multitasking, you're going thousand miles an hour sometimes and i saw your your yeah. setup eight you had eight fucking monitors oh, dude. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was incredible that was also how crazy uh keystone was to nailing that actually yeah yeah, yeah. wasn't that crazy yeah that was really close but yeah eight monitors that tells you you're multitasking like a son of a bitch like you have to be obviously you're all over the place yeah and that that wasn't even like a really uh that busy of a day i had Generally, if you're that, I think that was uh, the picture I took was on one of the fire radios that we have, and um, usually we're ju you just have your headset on and that's it. But like you're making phone callbacks and stuff, so you've got a phone in one hand and you've got your headset in the other. You're having wow. to keep up with the calls coming in, the, the people talking on the radio, CB radio. If, on your so chest. is it 
Is it hard to kind of keep up like clear communication going all over the place? Like, do you ever get kind of mixed up and yeah, sometimes, but it it just really depends. I I think the busiest I've ever been as far as the most things going on at one time was I had the radio in my ear. uh, I had my phone going on, on, on this hand. And then I had walkies out in front of me, like walkie talkies and those are for separate channels. I think I had six of those in front of me, all of them active all at the same time because we just had a like a really bad storm come through and there was a train derailment and there was a couple of fires that were started from uh, like bolts of lightning and hitting houses and stuff. And it was just, it was a madhouse. And you're having to, I, the whole time I'm like, hang on and just picking up walkies and, and you know, copy, copy and just, just wow. back and forth the whole time. You ever feel so overwhelmed that you're like, fuck this. I'm, I can't, I can't anymore. No, I'll try not. Like to. that sounds insane. <laughs> that sounds like that's after twenty three years. We'll have their true. Well, let me piggyback years. off that for one second. Dan, has there been a night where it? I mean, obviously you haven't quit, but I mean, where you're like, listen, I have to take a breather. I mean, the mental health would still be a, a big issue here. Yeah, I mean, I, I usually just kind of decompress afterwards. I mean, if we really need it, um, we can hop up. I mean, there's there's times that that happens, and you know, there's there's times that the supervisor might come around and say, hey, we just listened to that last call. You need to get up for a minute. I'm like, no, screw that. There's more people calling. So yeah, I can just... see how easily like somebody new would be like, this is just too overwhelming. Oh, yeah. Easily. Hey, Dan, give me uh, one second. What, actually, that gives me a good question. What's the shortest period of time you've ever seen somebody work as a as a 911 dispatcher? Um, there. Well, as far as the actual personnel, I didn't have any, like I didn't, you know, have any, um, anything to do with them at this point they'll sometimes they'll get hired and just never show up um mm-hmm. uh, me, me personally though uh, i was a trainer for 10 years and i mean i was a hard ass i mean I, the people that you know made it through with me a lot of them are still there and uh as far as you know this one that i'm, I'm thinking of they, she actually came in and uh she was doing her job and everything like that and she kept kind of screwing up and i was i, I was firm but you know i I'm cordial with everybody. I try to be anyway. And I was like, well, look, this is the way it is. This is the way it's got to be, you know, um, you know, and at the end of the night, she took out well, close to the end of the night. She took kind of a bad call and she really tore up about it. I was like, look, I, I'm, I feel sorry for you, you know, that you took this bad call, but this is something that happens like every day. I mean, this is, you have to be prepared for, it. you might have multiple calls just like this every day. And, you know, you might want to think if this is going to be the right thing for you. She just didn't show up the next day. Yeah, I'd imagine that happens so she, a lot. <laughs> she worked. She worked a full day, though. Yeah, I was thinking like people quitting in the middle of their shift. Like, I can't do this. <laughs> like, no, just a couple of hours fired. even. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, if it's if it's that, it's usually they get fired, and they'll you know they'll just bring them to the office, bring your stuff with you. <laughs> yeah, I had a question about um because you've been doing it for twenty three years now, so you've seen you know, I know you started in what two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. But, you know, coming in, coming to 2000, you really kind of seen that technology kind of come from the 90s, right? You were kind of working on that old technology. So you've seen it kind of grow. Um, how's that been, first of all? And also, have you seen any tools come into play that's, like, just been revolutionary, that's changed the game completely? Yeah, when I started, um, like, the, the phones, they were being recorded seriously on this huge, like, tape. Um, it was, like, actual real tape, you know, so it wasn't digital at all back then. Uh, it was one of the things that uh, you could actually turn on and turn off. So wow! Uh, but uh, I can the, imagine the big, though, probably the from the eighties, right? Yeah, 70s yeah, or probably 80s. so. Um, but as far as technology goes, the the biggest thing, cell phones. It's been like grand and a a terrible thing. And the and like in the year two thousand, not many people had cell phones. I mean, yeah. it was, there were a few of them, but not very many. Most people still had home phones back then. Yep. And uh, it was not out of the ordinary for somebody to have a wreck at three o'clock in the morning and go and knock on somebody's door and say, Hey, can I use your phone? Because I just had a wreck down the street, you know, but now it's, everybody's got a cell phone. It, you're always so it's connected. Instant. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all the time. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The cell phone, of, honestly, the best thing just in our general lives. Right. But in and an it really is the best situation. and the worst, right? best and the worst. Yeah. It. It and really it sucks is. also, um, <laughs> we kind of get both ends of it now, you know, because you're going to get to see you, you know, the the device to make the communication to make the the call, but also, you know, a lot of times now this is going down a different avenue. But instead of making the call, they're filming it, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I mean. and they're they're trying to actually uh, kind of push that on us too. Like we're uh, there's a couple agencies around me, and I think that they've got it set up to where we can have it. I, I haven't seen it yet, but 
that they can send in videos to us. Um, so that you know, would be I'm, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a part of it that I'm like, yeah, that's, that's going to be awesome. We can see what's going on. There's another part of me that, you know, I don't want to see, you know, a, um, you know, 400 pound elderly woman who's defecated all over herself. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to see that at all. There were, I think there would be situations where, for example, maybe they can make it to where you request the live stream, right? Yeah. Which, yeah. which is where, like, when you need to see what's happening, you request it and they just press a button and it shows it versus, you know, them just live streaming whatever every time they call. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, right now, I think the way they got it set up is just uh, not a live stream. It's like they can send us a video instead of being like live like that. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I haven't seen that yet. That's we even just... further in the future, the live yeah. thing. I really, I'd, um, give me one sec. I'm going to try to, I'm hoping that. That could be super helpful. Though. I'm just thinking of like from a, like I, I work in the tech world. You're good. You're good. I'm just grabbing something. We don't need that screen. Sorry. Uh, but anyway, um, I work in the tech world and it's so helpful for me to watch somebody I don't know when I'm instructing them on what to do. Oh, I'm, I see. I'm watching them. Yeah, uh, something did fuck up. Sorry, Stevie's, guys. Stevie's screen is completely distracting me. Or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, this is the fucking, um, this is, for some reason, that is the, I'm sorry, Brandon, but that is the fucking, the chat thing. Like, I don't know what's oh, glitched weird. out like that. Yeah, yeah it's messed I up. I was trying up. to fix it because there's a lot of good questions coming up. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, so anyway, let me start over. So I work in the tech world and it's super easy for me to just like somebody to share their screen and let me watch what they're doing so I can guide them through whatever process we're trying to fix or, or whatever process I'm trying to guide them on. I can imagine that would be super helpful for you to watch them do, maybe not that was such a such stressful situation. It's a lot different. So, but if you, if you could like see what they're doing and kind of guide them into, you know, I don't know if that, that, I guess that wouldn't really work though. Cause I'm, I'm thinking like CPR, they got to use both hands so they can't really film yeah. it. So I, I was kind of, I was kind of working it through my head as, as I was asking the question, but yeah, I don't, I, yeah. that actually wouldn't, maybe wouldn't be that helpful. Would it getting good descriptions of like vehicles involved in a wreck or something like that? That'd be kind of helpful. Yeah. Maybe where they're sitting at, or, um, if they're catching a suspect running away, we can get like a better description that way and actually be able to send out a, uh, a picture of the officers or something like that 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 would be probably the most helpful but like yeah. medical situations now not not so much yeah definitely wouldn't help that is interesting though and yeah man just it's, still, uh, it's, it's gonna that's a cool feature though that, that they could send you some images or or, or a video that I think yeah. that would definitely when be it, helpful when it gets going i think uh you know we'll have bugs to work out just like anything i mean like we've just in the past couple of years started doing text to 911 and it's been like kind of a, I don't know, it, it works sometimes, but a lot of times it's just a train wreck yeah. because they, you know, nobody responds to text in an efficient manner. So, uh, th I mean, the, here's the thing, even like I'll text the videos of my wife and it'll be the shittiest quality of all time for yeah. some reason, just for no reason whatsoever. Like it looks great on my phone, but when I send it through a text, it looks like garbage. So th there's... yeah, it's highly compressed. You send it through like the actual yeah. SMS text. I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. you know really crappy quality um brandon can you share a now i'm taking this one from the chat can you share a funny call with us yeah yeah actually uh one of the things i was uh, i was just on a different show a, a few hours ago and i was talking about this um this was one that actually almost made me laugh this is like really bad you know i really hate it for the guy because uh, he had a, a genuine emergency he this guy calls in he, he says he's been sick for the past like three or four days and um he was like i've been uh, throwing up and you know uh, like j you could hear it in his voice he he kind of had this kind of like he's like yeah I'm, I'm in a bad way man i just i don't know what to do it's like i i can't stop pooping he said it just like that and <laughs> like and he's like I i'm throwing up and every time i cough i poop <laughs> And then he just starts coughing. And at that point, I nearly lost it. And, oh, my God. Because you're yeah. like, he's probably just shitting himself. Exactly. That's what I thought. I, I just, <laughs> I had so much trouble with that. I had to pull the microphone away from my mouth. And um, I had to, like, kind of compose myself. But like I said, it's it was funny from an outsider's perspective. 
feel really bad for the guy. I'm, I'm, yeah, you know, yeah, it just hits you wrong, right? Yeah, like it's almost exactly. like you're in a, you know, even a more morbid situation, a funeral, you know, and all of a sudden something catches you and you kind of give a chuckle. <laughs> like, yeah, it, you and, know, it uh, happens. And people will have like the you know darker sense of humor. You have to have a dark sense of humor probably to work in this. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I was gonna say here. like a, another one that I had. Uh, well, it wasn't mine. It was a, a friend of mine that took this. It was one of one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Is this. Uh, this guy calls, gets uh, my butt on the phone, and he was like, uh, hey, man, send the fire department out, man. I, I, my house is on fire. He goes, all right, what's the address? He goes, man, my house is on 17th Avenue. He goes, yeah, what's the address on 17th? He goes, man, it's on 17th. Just send the fire department up. He goes, look, sir, I need the, the actual address. What's the address? He goes, look, just send the fire department up 17th Avenue. I guarantee you I'm the only motherfucker whose house is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, because, I mean, and but also, how do you not know the address? Like, what's going on there? Yeah, That's I mean, the pe- people will just, like, have Dude. that all the time where they, you at know, that point, they, it almost they have like it right at the top of their, Yeah, exactly. It, and it wasn't, though. I'd so, imagine, you know, right. today people probably don't keep that like we used to back in the day, and you know, in their head like that, like their addresses probably. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah, and this is back when uh, I think the, the cell phones were still, like, new. We didn't have GPS on them, stuff like that. So, oh, man. Um, we actually needed the address. So, like, when... You got a landline. They call in. We got the address immediately. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And with cell phones, you can't get uh, location data at all. Now we can. Yeah. But uh, okay. back like in the early 2000s, there was nothing like that at all. And when we first started getting the location stuff, it was like, I remember when they first Game told changer. us, they, it, well, kind of to a degree, they said, you know, we've got GPS now. It's starting on some phones. It's not on all of them. And the ones that we do have it, it'll narrow it down to about the size of a football field. I'm like, that's helpful okay. if you live in the country. It's not at all helpful if you're downtown. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's so how crazy... precise is it now? Oh, it, it can get down within feet. Like uh, some, uh, like depending on the phone and what kind of technology they actually have built in, the type of the GPS, and if it's, uh, I guess probably the the satellites as well, but. Uh, so just just collider. calling in, you guys were getting that data. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. You you have to have it turned on uh, by default. All phones have it turned on for nine one one your location. But yeah, I mean sometimes I can tell what room in the house you're in. Do you get a lot of prank calls that yeah. you got to send somebody out at? Yeah, I mean if somebody calls in and says something, we got to go and investigate it like it's like it's true. So right. Um, so after you get a while a, though, we'll do you stop get any uh, name one? Just hang ups. Do you still have to check that? Yeah. Every no matter Sunday. what you're checking it yeah well, we might not send somebody out to it but we're calling back and mm-hmm. you know trying See to find out up. what's going on yeah because i imagine there's little kids probably calling 911 yeah. and then you'll call I, back and the parents like oh my god i yeah. I, I called 911 when i was really young and I did hung up immediately and they called back and i didn't answer nobody Same. they didn't send anybody out thankfully but I thought, we were probably together to stevie yeah. actually yeah it was probably papa yeah <laughs> That's what I'm remembering anyways. Yeah, I think we were together when we did it. And we were freaking the fuck out. We were like, like oh, oh my god. god, oh my god. Because I mean, cops? At, at that point, you're going to be waiting for at, like at least an hour. The first hour, you're just like, any second, our lives are over. Yeah. <laughs> I do <laughs> remember calling that one. Pissed. Um, so is there any, so I'm going to, I want I want to get like some, you know, I want to, whatever you want to share in the, in the wild story realm, but I'm interested in this. Is there any stories that you truly wouldn't even share? Like if you got any stories that you're like, I would, you know, I don't want them obviously, but is there some level like you're like, I would not even share some of the things that's happened. Well, uh, used to people would ask me all the time. What's the worst call you've taken. And the first few times, uh, they asked me that I told them. And then like immediately, I I, I didn't really want to hear that. So I've I've stopped talking about like a couple of those. I mean, really bad ones. I mean, I've I've got you know, terrible stories. Yeah, I, hearing people kill themselves on the telephone with you. Um, well, yeah, you know, like the, you're you're like the last person that somebody talks to ever. Um, you know, that just is, that's stuff deep, like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they some of them kind of stick with you, but it just it depends on what level it is and what happened. So, dude, that has to work on your psyche so far, right? Yeah, a little bit, but it's it's not too bad. I mean, I've, like I said, I've I've been doing it for so long, and right, yeah. I I, was, I think I've kind of estimated. I don't know, if, you know, for a fact, but I, the time I've been there, I think I've probably handled either on the phones or on the radio, probably close to a million calls by myself. Yeah, a million shit. Yeah, 
I mean, that dude, makes sense, dude. 23 fucking years. So intense, man. Holy wow. shit. Wow. Yeah, a couple hundred calls a day, usually. Have you, I mean, you know, stop me if you don't want to answer anything, but, like, have you ever actually stopped somebody from committing suicide? Have you talked them down? Have you had to went that Yeah, far? so th- this is the thing that, um, that I share a lot, and most people don't really realize this. There are two types of suicidal callers. Uh, the type of person will call in, they'll say, you know, I'm feeling suicidal. You know, I need some help. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. You know, I just... I'm, looking for some help or whatever like they for the most part they won't kill themselves they just they are looking for help they want to go to the hospital they want to get some medicine they want to go get some sort of you know therapy or something like that they just want help truly want the, pe- help. the people that that do want to kill themselves and actually do if they call in and they say you know this is my name i live at this address or i'm at this this address i'm going to kill myself you can find me back here tell so and so that i love them uh or whatever or, or i'm sorry and then they set the phone down. Those people kill themselves. You can't talk them out of it. They've made up their mind. They're just letting people know, and that's that's it. They they don't want their family to come home and find them. So um, there's, I've had multiple multiple of those, and you can't talk them down. I mean, I, it's happening I, I, so fast. Yeah, I was on the Damn, phone with one when I heard the gunshot go off. I was on the phone with the this guy when he said it, and he, he like he heard a splash in the background. They got out there and. They found that he tied some brick blocks to his uh, feet and threw them in the uh, pool and drowned himself. So, I mean. Wow. Uh, what the fuck? What a shitty I way mean, to that's kill yourself. has got to be the worst way to do it. Yeah. Dude, yeah. drowning is one of my biggest fears. For real, yeah. dude. Yeah. Why Holy would you choose that one? Shit. Jeez. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, stuff like that happens, though. I mean, wow. Yeah, stuff you never think about, you know? Jesus, man. I want to dive deeper into that guy's psyche that killed himself. Why did you choose this one, sir? Good Lord. Yeah. I mean, fuck, that's he morbid. Know, fuck. He had to know there's other ways. And you, you think about it, too. Like, a lot of people don't know this about, like, drowning. Um, once you go under, you're, you're struggling for a little bit, and then you're holding your breath, and then you pass out. And when you pass out, you start breathing again. Like, your body starts breathing. So at that point, s- you suck in all the water, it up, yeah. and usually when that happens, you wake up. So oh, guy, really? Yeah. So and you're drowning. He actually, I yeah, didn't know that. There's nothing he can do. So he's down there struggling, and there's nothing he can do. And then how long does it take after that? Uh, something after like you that, wake I, back up. Yeah, I, it could be you know a few seconds. It could be a couple minutes. I mean, he <sighs> dude, a yeah, couple minutes really is bad. that's torture. That's insane. You, you can't breathe as much as you want to there's no possible way you can breathe oh, you like I've had, hard, there's water going in i've had shortness of breath that felt like like I'm, i used to have asthma somehow i grew out of it I, I, apparently that's a thing but uh i grew I into to, when i was I know, yeah, I you grew into it used to. yeah we flip-flopped we weirdly. traded you son of a bitch but uh <laughs> i did so i did a little bit of witchcraft and and put it on you instead of me but anyway <laughs> uh dude i had shortness of breath to where like dude i felt like like it was horrible. I mean, and this is not I can't breathe. This is just shortness of breath. Like so yeah. severe that like it felt like horrible. It was torture. But I mean, you know, you take a couple of puffs of an inhaler or you know, I actually had it so bad that I did have to go to the hospital once. Um but uh I can't imagine like that sucked. Like really fucking bad that sucked, right? Yeah. Water is you can't there's no breath. Like yeah. you're you're feeling that times ten plus you know, there's no, there's no, there's no way out. Like, it's just, that's, that's, yeah, that's I, just, I literally can't imagine it. Like, fears, that's how, dude, that's how insane it is. is yeah. drowning. Um, and even to say that last week I was talking about, and I forget it, I looked up the definition of what it's called or, you know, whatever. But when, you know, I was, I, I, when I drive over a bridge, I want to drive off of it so bad, like into the ocean. Like, I don't want to go in and drown. I don't have any, I don't want to die. I don't want to kill myself, but I just have that inner, I want to go, baby. I want to go off so bad. You, just have the, you don't want to go. You just have the thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's, it's, yeah. A, it, it's, it's a thing that people have. I looked it up, but, um, yeah. But to think that, because I have a fear, dude, of drowning, I can't even swim. Like, I get freaked out. Like, I'm in the shallow end just chilling. Like, I'm not going any, I'm not even fucking with it. Like, no, it freaks me the fuck out. So I just can't get over this guy. Like, you know, Choosing dude what a torturous method, yeah. ending like fuck yeah that, i mean it's it's not it's not common but it's also not un- it's it's not it wasn't like a single thing i mean people do drown themselves Crazy. it's just it's in the big scheme of suicides it's it's one of the lower ones but more more than one person has done that yeah yeah wow yeah. dude um and i got a good question here and i'm interested in this one kathy 
and I keep clicking on it like sh- I can show it. I fucked that up tonight, guys. Sorry. But Kathy, have you ever coached a delivery of a baby? Yes. Um, actually, Whoa. the, the uh, actually the first several times that that happened, I was a trainer and I had never actually done it myself. So I was teaching someone else how to do it, even though I'd never done it myself. Oh, well. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's been a few of those, uh, here recently. I haven't had one in a while though. Um, so, so it used it's, to be kind of a normal close. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, when we're shorter on personnel, we're, we're actually getting to the point now where we actually are getting a little bit caught up, but that's, it's kind of ebbs and flows. But when you have enough people working, you're not on the phones quite as much. You're on the radio uh, a lot more, uh, back then I was on the phones a lot more than the radio. So, um, I think that had a lot to do with it. I got one more here from the chat. I like this one as well, too. I, I mean, it's Halloween from Shelly. Um, creepiest call. Do you have a creepy oh, call? Know. Um, Anybody calling in, giving you a... I've called 911 with a ghost story. Something just off the wall. Most of those are not real. I mean, they're like they... We got a but lot of people have that have like mental health problems. They'll call in and they'll talk about stuff. I mean, actually, just... Uh, this wasn't necessarily creepy. This was just, we knew it was a mental health type thing. Uh, this was probably, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, I mentioned it on one of my episodes, just kind of talking. This woman was out, uh, by our homeless mission and she was outside and she had a lead pipe and she was swinging it around just kind of at the air. And she kept screaming that, uh, her son was dead and she was ready to, to kill his spirit once it comes back alive. So, I mean, just, you know, kind of weird. It's like out, that out of her yeah. mind. Yeah. I yeah, it's like criteria, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, as far as creepy though. I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily nothing that would really like that. hit you. Somebody like what I'm kind of call in with a fucking swamp monster or Bigfoot or like I just seen Moth a fucking Man. UFO, dude. Send the police. Yeah. Like, yeah, but they're serious. I, I want one of those. I, I do want to. I, I that hasn't happened. Like that, but, but I mean, we, we get stuff like we had this one woman that used to call in all the time. This is kind of it was weird and funny. She was she did have like some mental health problems, like you know Alzheimer's or something like that. She was an older lady. But she would call in and say that there were lights shining through her window like every night. And, you know, the police would go out there and kind of check it out. And it was nothing while they were there, nothing at all. And then one time she called in and said the same type of thing. And they went over there to check on her just to see if she's okay. They, they knew it wasn't. And then she's like, there it is. And then she they turned around. They didn't realize that she lived at the end of the, the airport runway, like cl- kind of close by there. And it was light shining from the airplanes taking off. So she really fell out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I saw a really good one uh, that I want to ask, and I actually want to tag onto it as well. Yeah. Have you ever? So back to the baby delivery thing. Have you ever had someone name a baby after you for helping them deliver it? That's a good one. And I want to no. tag onto that to. Okay, <laughs> so you already answered that one. I want to tag onto that to. Have you ever gotten like letters or gotten personal like with any with any of the callers where like you helped them? Yeah, anybody they, that they reached helped. out or they you found them or they found you and. You guys kind of got it built. That's a rescue number one thing. They had reunite the callers with the people they yeah. helped. Well, the um, as far as the baby goes, no, I haven't, and I hope that never happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's one of those weird things. Uh, I don't know. That's that's a little bit odd. I mean, so no, I hope that doesn't happen. Please name your baby something else. You know, I, I'm just I, I was a small. Piece well, I was named after my doctor who delivered me. So I mean, people do that. You know. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, like. I just don't want that at all. <laughs> I don't want none of that karma, yeah. baby. As far as like letters, I mean, um, I've, I've got a few over the years and stuff like that. And, um, th- they were mostly just kind of like, Oh, I was, you know, in a time of need and you really helped me out through it and all that kind of stuff. So, um, cool. little stuff like that. I've, I, I don't recall that I've ever like been united with these people I've talked to on the phone. Uh, that's pretty rare. You have to have some sort of a big type thing. Like, you know, delivering the baby or something like that. Sometimes that happens like it, with a special circumstance. Uh, I've got a coworker who helped deliver a baby that, um, they were on the way to the hospital and it was just too late. It was going to happen right then. They pulled over on the side of the interstate and they had the baby there in the car. So like that, like, you know, made the news and everything and they, the news got them reunited, stuff like that. So that was, that was kind of mm-hmm. cool. Wow. Uh, I got one more from chat here. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, this is from Andy J Brandon. Have you ever had a moment during your career where you froze even for a brief moment? Something that just kind of took, took you. (laughs) Oh shit. I I literally thought you got stuck for a second. I was like, Oh God, it happened. That's what a a comedian too. 
You know, yeah, yeah. too. Yeah, I, I actually that am. That was good, I, dude. One of the things. Um, <laughs> that was good. No, I, um, there's always times that you, you, especially like if you're on the radio side of things, you've got so much going on that there are times where your brain just stops working. I mean, I, I've got the, uh, generally I have pretty good short-term memory, but like anything past that, it's just gone. So uh, it's like, uh, you know, the RAM in your computer, it's there and it's gone in a second. So um, it honestly, yeah, I mean, it's, that's yeah, starting to cut you off, but it seems like you're the perfect, like, mindset for this job, honestly. I mean, I try. Dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's I probably, mean, that's just after years of doing it too, right? And it's yeah. so heavy, bro. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, you know, experience plays a lot into it, but there, if you're, you know, tra- trained well and you have the right aptitude for the job and everything, you know, just a little bit of time, you're, you're right in it. You know what to do. I mean, uh, years of experience does help out a lot, but if you learn it right, you're going to know it and you're in the job. So, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Yeah, so, um, so I guess to, like to kind of tack onto that, you, so I guess you kind of, you have to leave everything at work, right? All the, oh, absolutely. Yeah. All the shit that you've heard over the day, you can't take that with you. Yeah. I, I don't know that I could, I'd, I'd really have to think about anything I, I touched today. Like any, any call that I took, yep. um, there was uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, cause I was, I think I was either interviewed on somebody else's show or I don't know what it was, but, uh, like that day they, they asked me something and I was like, Oh, I actually do remember a call. My last call today. Um, it was a guy who called in and his brother had like a samurai sword or a machete or something like that. And he had it to his chest and he'd already kind of poked himself a couple of times and he was threatening to stab himself. And he was inside like breaking stuff around the house and he was asking for help to come out. And, you know, um, I was on the phone with him and the police got there and I hung up the phone and that was my last call today. So I got up and left. No idea what happened to him. Wow. So, wow. And you kind of just, I mean, you have to leave that, right? You can't just yeah. go digging around. Yeah. I need the end of the story, man. That would, that's actually what would fuck me up. I'm like, what so happened to old a, dude with the sword? There's a movie with old Jake Gyllenhaal. I wonder if you've, you've seen it, Brandon. No, I had that one. I haven't seen uh, a lot of, but you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's the, where he's a, a dispatch or something like that. Everybody I've talked to said it's terrible, but like, and, and I it, think, I think he was a cop and he got delegated to a dispatcher because of some incident. Yeah. And, and, um, but he gets super involved in the call and, you know, personally involved in the call. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched that. I probably will at some point. It, it, if it's not good, it's going to be really disappointing because he was in one of my favorite cop movies ever end of watch. That was an amazing movie. It was great. I've not seen that one. And even watching oh, it, it's fairly unrealistic. Like you can just tell, like it's, it's a little yeah. out there end of watch though it's um it's i mean oh yeah the the circumstances they put on there it's it's kind of unrealistic on some parts of it but the actual policing part of it it's pretty true Mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah i did i did enjoy the movie though i gotta say so have you have you seen like you know have you seen other folks and maybe you've even tried to maybe have to step in and warn them have you seen them get too involved with with something like I guess yeah, it's I mean, almost you have early on when I uh, when I first started doing it. That's one of the things you have to kind of back away from. Just like you guys, you're like, okay, you've got to you, you want to know what happened and all that kind of stuff. Like really early on in my career, like my first month, um, I took a call from a woman who she was a, a student at one of the colleges here, and uh, she was at home. It was late at night. It was probably I don't know, probably around midnight or something like that, and somebody broke into her, uh, her apartment that she had and taped her up, um, forcibly raped her at knife point, stole her uh, credit card and debit card, stuff like that. And, you know, left her there. She managed to get untied and, uh, or, uh, untaped, I guess. And, you know, at that point I'm, I'm just, I'm taking all this information down. And once I get off the phone with her, this woman was about my age. I started when I was 20 and she, I think she was like 20 or 21. And I'm like, all right, what do I do? I feel like I need to go and like do something or, you know, uh, I don't know what, you know, just help her out. And, you know, my trainer was like, no, you did help her out. This is, this is well, your piece. Yeah. This is your piece of it. I mean, and you did what you were supposed you to do. your part. Like, yeah. 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 That's insane. Yeah. Like you That's... want to, you know, uh, you, what you've learned and you learn quickly, but out the gate, you were like, I, you know, I, I'm not done here. I mean, it sounds like know. you had a really good trainer. Honestly, and obviously you have this yeah. job because you are someone that wants to help. So yeah, with something like that, you, you want to, and you have to have that. I mean, it's, uh, it can get frustrating at times, but for the most part, you, you at the end of the day, you, you kind of not necessarily pat yourself on the back. I mean, I'm kind of past that. I just know that I've, 
I, I do my job well and you know that's enough for me i do think if i was doing it that i might i might just i just feel like if i had a call like that i might get obsessed you know like keep googling like what's going on like how was this progressed like how was this you know how did it play out you know what i mean like trying to figure out what's happened if you knew the the amount of calls if you like experienced it at, at the end of the day you're like i you know it's, it's not that so you don't much, really yeah. care it's just like you know you've done so much in the day that you forgot everything throughout the yeah. day so it's not that big of a deal it's just piling yeah. on and building and building yeah um right here from the chat i'm going to take this one right here uh love that dirty water brandon are you in a regional center or at a local department uh, i'm in a local department we uh metro nashville so it's uh we cover all of Davidson County, which is uh, all of Metro Nashville. Um, most places are not regional, though. Most places are like kind of uh, like local municipalities. There, uh, if you have like a state trooper, like a highway patrol type thing, they are regional. Um, sometimes you'll have like in very very small areas, like you get up in like the, the Dakotas or you know Iowa, some place like that. You'll have some place that they'll have a, a regional center where they cover three or four or five counties and. You know, they, they'll have like two or three dispatchers and that's all they have for all that area. Is there any kind of issues that you've run into with, um, or do you have to even ask for permission to upload the calls like and do them into a podcast? That's something yeah. I wondered about. Yeah. Yeah. It is for that. I'm actually treated as media. So I have to request calls just like anybody else. Nice. And, you know, so if I have to, if, and I, I can't necessarily have knowledge of it, I have to find out just like everybody else. So if I take a call myself and I'm like, Oh, that would be an amazing call. I can't just jump in and use it. So interesting. And Are there avenues you can go through sense. it to use your own call if you wanted to? Uh, if it's like a kind of a low key type call, I've used a couple of those in the past, but, um, you know, the big ones I have to find out just like anybody else. I can't use my job to forward the, right. the podcast thing. And so that does make sense. Yeah, it does make yeah. sense. Yeah. It feels like it would also almost be like a, an ethical thing, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, that's it is. I mean, people ask all the time, please play some of your own calls. And, you know, I want to, you know, if um, if it's a big enough incident and I'm a piece of it and the news media picks it up and, you know, I'm not part of the request part of it, I will absolutely play something like that. Yep. I see a good one that I kind of want to alter a little bit. Andy J says, do you this is her question. Do you worry at, that at some point your job will negatively affect your view of humanity? And I wonder if it has your job has shaped your view of humanity. Uh, absolutely, and it happened years and years ago. <laughs> Everybody's a suspect. <laughs> Which one? So it has shaped your view, or? Yeah. But do you do you worry that yeah, it negatively? Has. Okay. No, it, it already has. It it um. People and actually on the last episode, I was just talking about this. Uh, people don't know what goes on. People don't know that there's so much crime going on all the time. I mean, you go into Walmart and you're walking around and everybody's just nice and kosher and buying their groceries or whatever like that. What you don't know is there are people in there stealing right then and there. I mean, yeah. granted that's a small thing, but there is crime going on everywhere all the time. Right. And people just don't know about it. It's not reported on the news. And, you know, even the, the small amounts of things that, that are reported on the news, they only get maybe, you know, 10% of the big stuff. So and I can only imagine what's going on in Nashville. Like we, me and Stevie here live in a pretty small town. Nashville is, there's, I mean, <laughs> there's got to be a lot of shit going on in that. I mean, it's a, it's a bigger city, right? Yeah. And today it, it's, it's a popular time. city, and today yeah. it's almost like stuff's got to go viral to get any kind of real attention, right? Like, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you go around and, and kind of look at crime stuff, uh, you know, if you search on Google or something like that, and you instead of just like doing the top stories, if you sort it by like date or something like that, you'll get the more local stuff, and that's the stuff that's like you know, Nashville specifically, or some small town or something like that, that's not going to make national news. It's pretty rare that a, a true crime case, I mean, if you think about the actual true crime cases that, that are the big cases, yeah. I mean, there are, I think it's like 285 million 911 calls every single year that's made. And the big cases are like maybe 10 or 15 a year that are like, that's unbelievable. Really that is cases. wild. What is it like 350 million people in the United States? Yeah. So it's it's damn near one call per person. Yeah. <laughs> damn near. Close. Wow. Yeah. And then you'll get the trickle of 10, 15, 10 or 15 out of 200, 300 million. 
Yeah. That's insane. That's like really that's unbelievable. Big true crime cases, you know, that like the uh uh like the Idaho four or something like that. That's that's one that's yeah. a big case and everybody jumped on and um but like you'll never hear about a uh, like nationally about a car crash that killed you know two people yeah and just being honest i'm sure there's been other very similar murders to what happened in idaho that we haven't heard about within the last year that would never get media attention because it didn't hit the viral moment at the time or you know something didn't hit just right social media just didn't make it happen yeah 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 circumstances that make you know like these are all like you know college kids they were just there having fun or whatever and that's the story they get they get stabbed yeah and yeah. the mystery and the, 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 you know, take it so long to catch the killer. I think drew, you know, drew attention to it a lot. So, yeah, um, they were, they I mean, had some pretty, pretty detailed stuff to actually find him though. I, I was, I was pretty impressed by the way they kind of narrowed it down and then, you know, rolled to him. So, and yeah. they've, they've got him. I mean, it's, uh, you, there's always like the tiniest bit of doubt in my mind about some stuff. There's no doubt in my mind that dude did that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we covered it. We actually broke basically our channel through that case because it was the hot case. And funnily enough, you know, we, we started this channel based on, I bought this new, this house and, uh, it was, it's kind of a creepy house. It's got an Amityville look to it. And there's a tombstone in the yard. The basement's hmm. creepy as shit. We used to play video games on here and we were going nowhere. And, uh, Stevie made a short about my house, the, the yeah. creepiness vibe to it. And that video that short did really well so he just kind of launched into true crime and then shortly after that the uh the idaho stuff started coming out and it was in november and he started reporting on that and you know a couple of videos did really well so we stuck with true crime and yeah. uh dude yeah and brandon knows bob so yeah. and bob is basically you know meeting bob and jay has kind of molded our channel into where it is mm-hmm. now where we're kind of like all in on true crime yeah, Bob's a great yep. guy. I love Bob. Gotten deep in it. Um, and I just now shared in the chat there, I shared your YouTube channel, man. I shared your Twitter as well. Uh, make sure you're following Brandon. Um, we're definitely going to be keeping up with him, and he's chill as fuck to hang out with. <laughs> um, yeah, Bob, though, he's a, he's such an important friend and asset to have, right? Because, And Bob just started YouTube, Yeah. right? I mean, he, he had a YouTube channel already, and he had like 2,500 subscribers or something. But he just started actually doing lives on there, dude. He is, he, first of all, he's had like three lives and he's already killing it. Yeah. But he's yeah, about see, to take over the game. One of the things with, with him with, uh, that I noticed that he was doing like some of the TikTok stuff and like a mm-hmm. lot of it was just kind of like me. I was throwing up a, a video and it was like either like a little audiogram or something like that or it wasn't really hitting that well. And then he found a couple things that like really hit uh, on a case that he was kind of looking at and, you know, his, his, TikTok just blew up and um it, it's just it's weird the way that works and um you know I was just telling somebody else about this that um I, I'm still doing just like audiograms for YouTube but I've now got like better camera which I'm still trying to learn how to use like a DSLR camera and I've got like better lighting and stuff um so I've got to kind of tweak that and everything I think I've got kind of the recipe of what I want to do with uh with YouTube I just haven't you know put it on the, stove the time so are you yeah. going to start um using your youtube channel more yeah you yeah start doing i think do you, what I'm do you do have is... that link stevie you should throw that up I, I, i'll put it in the chat yep. oh you did okay yeah oh, sorry yeah i think um, i'm going to do like a little bit of my own video i'll mix it with some you know like kind of a slideshow of things relating to whatever i'm talking about and kind of bounce back and forth with that but just still having my my podcast i can pull to the podcast from that since yeah. uh I'll be, be doing the same type. Of, I, I write out my scripts and stuff like that. So I'll just roll with that and do it that way. And you put promote, on, uh, promote, promote on Twitter, dude. Twitter, Twitter's where it's at. Yeah, man. Twitter's been amazing for us. Um, and uh, that's one thing I didn't touch, man. I, I've been, I, I've had more luck on Facebook than anything. But uh, really, I, I well, see if you already it. have a following on Facebook, then that's probably where you should. Yeah, we that, can't get any place, movement on but, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I've got a, a chat like or a, a discussion group, and I mentioned like on my last episode. Uh, like you know something about a video i don't know if you guys saw it the the kids were out they stole a few cars and they ended up running over a bicyclist and killing him it was a i saw uh, that video yeah uh the guy that died he was a police chief at one point but anyway i posted that video and i talked about it on the last episode and like today it's been like non-stop i mean i think i had like additional like 50 people join my my nice. group today and it's, yeah, it's nearly, nearly 2,000 people in the group yeah 
Yeah, we have a Facebook too, and uh, yeah, it's so hard to get any kind of movement on there. But Twitter, Twitter, we've been doing Twitter's right. been successful, which we have Jay and Bob on Twitter who, you know, tag us and stuff and yeah. help help us a lot. Which yeah. I mean, cool little community. Um, I, uh, dude, shorts on YouTube also can be crazy. Six, like they can yeah. just go viral. Yeah, like, they just go sure. crazy out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure. Do you plan on doing lives? Uh, maybe. Uh, thing with my show was I I don't really have that many guests on. I mean on a Bob's been on my show a couple of times and if we do something like that, we'll absolutely go live. That's not a big deal. Cause we're just chatting like, you know, like you guys right, right. now, but yep. for the most part, I just do a solo episode and it's scripted and, um, you know, I write out the script and like every 30 minute episode, I'm, I'm right now anywhere from three to 6,000 words and you know, it's, uh, and then playing the 911 calls on top of it. So yeah, yeah. it's a lot of work. Yeah. And, and it man, shows, man, you're the doing episode it though, that I, and I actually the the episode that I, I didn't listen to it through through a podcast avenue. I listened to it through YouTube, and I fucking fell in love, dude. It's it's amazing. It sounds so, like the way that you construct it is, in my opinion, perfect. Oh, like, thank it you. Sounds <laughs> it sounds great. I love it. It's yeah, like it's, it's like you're telling a nonfiction story. Yeah, it, and it's, it's fucking incredible. It's real, it's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah, and your voice is perfect for this. You really <laughs> have a radio is, yeah. voice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think you're onto something, brother. Yeah, definitely stick with it, man. Well, I, I plan to. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this can kind of roll into a full time type thing. And um, that, that's actually a know, question I had for you. How long have you been doing the podcast? The podcast itself, I've been doing for a little bit over. Oh, well, actually, almost four years now. I'm thinking about Shit. it. I started in de- December of 2019. So I was uh, wondering that because it like you, you, you I feel like you've kind of nailed the format. Like you, like it's what i listened to was like amazing like it sounded like it was like i'm trying to put it into words and i can't like it was just perfect like, i guess the best way to describe it is it's, it felt like it was perfectly formatted right like it was like the way that you blend from you telling the story to the actual calls to you telling the story to the calls yeah. it was like you got it nailed down man yeah and i i'm i'm trying not to do like it will and on top of this too, one of the things with nine one one calls, I I start the show with like when I start doing my research, I'm looking for nine one one calls. That's what I look for before anything else. A lot of times I don't know anything about the crimes that happened. I I have to do the research from that. So, uh, but I try to make it to where it's like you know I said thirty forty five minute episode. That way, if you you got a little commute into work, you can listen to it on your way in, uh, that type thing. And yeah, I, I can imagine go, myself listening to this on commute. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't go as detailed as a lot of these uh, other shows do. I'd, I'd like to. I think if I went full time with doing the show, I could probably go a lot deeper with it and get a lot, you know. Dude, scripts aren't easy, man. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's rough. It's a lot of fucking work. Like, that's what I do right now. I'm, I've started a new thing on Tuesdays where I'm kind of putting together a story <laughs> around a case. And, dude, it's it's a lot of fucking work. Like, that's literally yeah, what I'm really doing is. tomorrow. My entire Saturday tomorrow is going to be working on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand, like, how much work goes into it. I mean... For a, a small yeah. episode, I'm putting like minimum ten hours, probably, uh, but like most of them is like probably between twenty and thirty hours. And it's a you have a unique situation where it's your job, but it's also a passion for you, man. It's a passion project. This this side of it, yeah, the yeah. content creator side of it, that's interesting, man. That's very unique, honestly. The fact that you you work a full time job doing this stuff, and then you go home and work another job doing this, the, not not taking the calls, but going through calls. I mean that yeah. there there's I mean that if the, if if there's a definition for passion that's it right <laughs> yeah I, like I said I'd, I'd like to do you know, I want to put a lot of you know a lot of people say oh like the podcast like a hobby or whatever like that you know I, I'm starting to think of it not only as like something I enjoy doing but but also a business too so I, I can hope hopefully jump in and do that full time that way I can start making even better stuff and like absolutely yeah do all yeah. that that's that's us in my too. opinion you're killing it uh right now me and Dave we work regular freaking jobs and uh yeah I'd love to get to a point to where I can not do this as a side thing and I can take dude I I, I can only dream about this now but I, I can imagine like taking a week and scheduling out those weeks you know this day is going to be for a script this day is going to be for yeah. filming this day is going to be for this dude I mean, I think that'd be so cool. It but hey, nice. yeah. the hustle though, we're working for it. And I mean, oh yeah, hey, uh, just uh, what we were talking about earlier, Idaho happened last November. You know, we started getting into that case. What is that? I mean, we're not even a year into this right now. 
Yeah. I mean, you don't know what can happen. Is the thing like anything? Yep. Any video could take off at any moment. Like we got lucky with one of those, and um, and and now we've basically gotten into the side of it to where we do interviews on the regular with all kinds of different folks that are in different ventures inside of true crime, whether it's law enforcement or it's interesting, man. I mean, you never know where this can go. And I, our lives <laughs> have already changed just because it's crazy. we've met so many in, like amazing people in in this community, people we never thought that you know would accept interviews or want to talk to us right but it happened it's crazy it's like, crazy or, it's i've had it's similar wild. i mean it's like uh when i started this it was me and another guy that i used to work with he he was actually a dispatcher too and he was there for 40 years and he retired and you know i was like hey man like i'm gonna start this podcast thing up and he he was kind of like me he was like what what the hell's a podcast and i told him what it was <laughs> and we started out it was like kind of a buddy cop type show where we just talked about shit and we'd um, you know, play some 911 calls and uh, talk about them a little bit. And it was not really greatly organized or anything. And um, he was retired and he was like, okay, this is taking a lot. So he just wanted to stay retired. So he kind of bowed out of it and I molded it. But like along the way, I mean, I, I've been amazed that some wow. of the things that happened to me, like I've been a speaker at Crime Con, you know, two years in mm -hmm. a row. And um, I've been like interviewed on court TV a few times and, just the, a little stuff like that. It's it's really fun. That's interesting. Yeah, we are hoping to be at Crimecon next year, and it's in Nashville, right? Yeah, yeah it, bro, you can go to your house and go to sleep, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah everybody said that. Like, uh, I've got another buddy of mine, um, Tyler from Minds of Madness. He's a great guy. Like, yeah, he's, he's in here all the time. Yeah, he's uh, you know from Canada, and he he says, "All right, yeah, I'm staying at your place next year." I was like, "Dude, you don't understand." I, I've got a small place. I've got a two bedroom. <laughs> you're gonna have room. you're gonna have too many people. Saying, Everybody's like, "We're going place. to Brandon." You're like, "No, nah, guys, it's really gonna work out." <laughs> and Huge like, after party at Brandon's. Yeah, I live like 45 minutes away from where the actual hotel is. It's gonna be at, so I'm not it's, like, "No, nah, it's not that close." Might not be that good. We put yeah. in uh, the application whether we get in or not on the as being a podcast. I don't know, but we'll be there well, regardless. We, we I'll be there regardless. Spectators, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm gonna be going if I have to buy a ticket. I mean, I'm gonna be hanging out and and hustling, quite frankly. Yeah, that's uh, I know several people that did that just this year, and, they, and like they made you know great contacts with people, great networking. Uh, you, you still get to meet some of your fans while you're there. It's it's really really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the thing we need to get everybody together because you know we've built this community now, and you know, yeah, it'd be cool to be able and to so actually. Yeah, so, so many people that watch us are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Plus, yeah. I mean, Jay, Bob, you, like, I mean, a lot of the guests that we've had, Joe. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, Joe Jackal. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, man. We're even be, if we be there. we don't get a table or we don't get in, you know, on podcast row or whatever, hey, yeah, and we go as guests or as spectators, then it's still going to be worth it. Hey, all you got to do, if that's the case, is step outside. I'm going to have a trunk open with there we uh, go merch, yeah, parking lot table sales. set up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the way to do it and hustle it, you know, baby. You, you roll with that, and you know, every every night for Crime Con, we always end up in the hotel lobby bar and uh, like all the podcasters are there and you know any of the a lot of the speakers and stuff like right that. we just yeah. we just all kind of hang out we have drinks and it's way too late and we don't get enough sleep and it's just everybody <laughs> loving it you know it's it's really good so and the, you know really that's been the entire thing so far in general like you know that's we, we've been about the entire time i mean networking man like getting to know other pe yeah. people other content creators in the space and just and that's how you spread your wings truly because yeah. everybody's got their people, right? Everybody's got their their fans or whatever, like people that watch their content or they're really connected to them. And then, hey, just right now, you're gonna people are probably gonna find out about Brandon and look up this podcast and then have their fucking minds blown when they turn it on, <laughs> like and be like, oh shit, you know. I mean, that's the key, man. It's networking and just, I love it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it it works out, and then like I never thought that I'd meet some of these people that I've met and just you know. I, for instance, like uh, when I was getting ready for my session, I had this uh, crime con this year. Nancy Grace had the um, the session before mine, and she had like you know huge name people up on stage with her. And uh, as I'm walking to the stage, like in the kind of back you know, like kitchen hallway type thing, back behind everything, she's just walking back through, and she's like, "Hey, how y'all doing?" You know, so <laughs> yeah, you know, just <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It is interesting how. Uh... Yeah, it's. I did notice that about watching CrimeCon this year from the outside, seeing Bob, seeing people that I know there, and watch it, following it through the hashtag on Twitter. 
the bigger folks are mingling right in with everybody, right? Like, yeah, that's it the way seems it goes. like everybody's real accessible and yeah. interesting. There we go. Kathy just moved to Nashville. We'll see you there next year, Kathy. Oh, hell right. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm happy it's in Nashville as well because it's not too far from us. It's about five and a half hours, I think, drive. I believe yeah, that's about and- right. It's not too I'm actually, bad. I'm planning on, I, I haven't got it set up yet, but I'm planning on taking the entire week off and just, you know, everybody that wants to come down as far as like podcasters or whatever. I know how CrimeCon is. The very first year I went to it, it was like, you know, I flew out the day it started. I had to set up my table. Like it's almost as soon as I got off the plane, I still had my luggage literally underneath the table, you know, as I got set up and, you know, it was just nonstop. And then when CrimeCon ended, like it, I think two thirty or something like that on Sunday. My flight was at like five, so I was immediately out of there. Oh, it was just shit, nonstop yeah. the whole time. This time I added a couple extra days, and I was still like, man. And I never left the hotel. I mean, the most I left the hotel one night. I got out and just kind of walked outside for a few minutes. That was the most I left the, the hotel at all. And it probably went by like so, that. I mean, granted, just I flew by. Didn't have any. Yeah, it did. But you know, so this time I'm gonna try to get like the entire week off till. You know my my friends in the podcast realm come down a few days early let's go out and we'll we'll like hang out and party that would be like, dope. yeah beforehand and then you know we'll have crime con at the end of it to keep the party going that type thing so do you feel like uh here's a, here, i mean here's an interesting question do you feel like you've been to crime con, con multiple times you've even been a speaker but do you feel like through con, crime con that you have access to more eyes and people specifically because of crime con like oh absolutely yeah um mostly like the the whole networking thing but also from people who you know sat in my session who had no idea who it was they're like okay i'm going here and learn about nine one one calls and you know those people or you know just walking by my booth and saying hey you know what's your show about and you know i tell them what it is and you know give them free stickers or buttons or whatever like that too and that always helps out so any little bit to spread the word helps out it's kind of like uh, people randomly finding your stream, except way better because it's in person. <laughs> yeah, that's you yeah. doing a live stream yeah. in person at CrimeCon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the best way to do it. That's awesome. Well, um, Dan, do you have anything else to add in here, man? Um, I didn't have any more questions like lined up. Uh, actually, on. I did have one more. Hold on. I had a good ending one. Hold on. And this is for anybody out there, really. But any advice for anyone wanting to get into this? uh think hard about it sir the first off i mean uh, not trying to be funny about it but really think of, like can you handle these type of things like really deep in your heart can you and handle you've demonstrated it? that it's it's, yeah. a tough, it's a tough gig yeah can you handle being the last person that someone ever talks to before they're dead That's a good question. Uh, you know can That's you a handle serious a, one. a mom waking up and finding their their baby not breathing and trying to help them out you know the stuff like that it, can you handle uh, so many things going on all at the same time, like talking on the phone while you're typing and you've got something else going, like you have to listen out of both ears. Can you really handle that type thing? If you think you can, then, you know, absolutely go and try it. And I can guarantee you a local agency near you is hiring because we're always short. Everybody's yeah. always short. That turnover has got to be insane. The yeah. multitasking thing you mentioned, I think, I think that would get me before the, uh, the actual, like the the call whatever the call is about would or you know the because you're the, already stressed out about multiple the multitasking dude, that would kill me i think that part would kill me i think it would get me too nah dude you have a unique job and uh, a unique brain for this job i must say because i mean yeah dude just i i know that i could not do this like it's incredible honestly i'm fairly certain i could not do and it as well. everything that you just handle in general and i mean yeah bro it's it's crazy. It's an awesome. I get frustrated it's, it's at my job when I'm working on something and I get three or four emails or, or messages coming <laughs> through. Like I'm like, but this should, just shut the fuck up over here. I got I'm doing this, you know. Like I, Dude, I get the mad. Printer at work fucks up. I'm just like, no, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. No, we're yeah, my, you... we're not built for it, Stevie. Hold on, somebody's saying something about a question here. What do we got here? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Polo Buzz, Joni's question. What does she got? Brandon, what do you do for me? Hold on. What do you do for me time? Okay. What do you do for me time if that's a thing for you? Yeah. What do you like to do to just kind of chill out? Uh, I just, I like going out uh, restaurants. Uh, I like traveling, you know, go to new places. I've been to a few places uh, this year. Just, um, 
yeah, having a few drinks, whatever like that, just anything new that's uh, away from this. And, uh, you know, being, like I said, true crime, it's, it's all the time. So when I remove myself, a lot of people is like, Oh, you know, I, I love your show and whatever like that. And that's, that's cool. I listen to some other shows, like just to kind of hear what kind of thing they're doing, but I can't get into it, like, and listen to it all the time. And like, listen to this, um, I know this other podcaster that, um, goes really, really deep into cases and has like 60 plus episode seasons and all, all on one case where wow. they're not only having like, you know, details and he goes out and does interviews. Like he actually goes to the scene and, uh, interviews people personally and records it and, then I'll have discussions with other people about it, you know, like in between and like, that's great. I can't get into it. That's a like lot. I, that's yeah, heavy. Um, as much as I, I, if I was not in this realm, I think I would actually probably like that stuff. But, uh, I just, I, I, because I'm so engulfed in true crime all the time. I'm like, okay, you know, once I'm done with my work and the podcast, that's it. Like I'm going to do something else. I'll go and see a movie or, um, you know, go out to eat at a new place or whatever, you know, anything to just do something else. Um, yeah. and right here, right at the end, I like what starry crystal night saying, imagine how many lives you've saved. Yeah. Probably like two. I'm just kidding. <laughs> probably so many dudes like yeah, out of a I million calls. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> to, to be fair though, like that, that's actually a pretty rare type thing. I mean, uh, to, uh, another kind of bad fact, I guess. A lot of people think, you know, it's like on the movies when you have CPR going that they'll just pop right out of it. And that's not the case. I mean, it's, I think CPR is actually successful in somewhere around 5% of people that you do it. Wow. So I actually didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Well, I would also say, I mean, people call you for emergencies and emergencies are probably not typically as survivable as people want them to be. Right. If they're real emergencies. Yeah. But I um, mean, you, you'd be amazed. Like I'd probably say anywhere from 40 to 50% of the calls we take on nine one one our butt dials like that it's just people with their phone wow, in their pocket a, or whatever like that. that's a lot yeah yeah and wow. like maybe actually 10 percent of the calls that we take would be considered what i would call a life-threatening emergency well that that sounds like a problem <laughs> that sounds like yeah. something that needs to be addressed somehow oh it's been addressed like we've uh, in nashville we've ran like radio and tv ads like put up billboards and you know everything we can go to community meetings and yeah. it's it's done nothing at all so wow. it's, um, people just know that like police, not one, that's all. Damn. Is, what so. is the solution? Maybe phones need to like, when you <clears> dial <throat> now, I, I mean, <clears throat> it's a two handed sword or a two, two sided sword, I guess, because, or a double edged sword is what I'm trying to say, because yeah. you, you want, I guess you, if in an emergency, you want it to be as easy as possible to dial 911 because my, my implementation was like, are you sure you want to dial 911? Yeah. And then you have to press the button. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Which maybe that wouldn't be too bad, but maybe that's something that, you know, phone carriers should implement or, you know, people who make cell phones should put in there. I don't know. Well, the the way that I've thought about getting like, as far as the, the actual, the butt dials and stuff like that, I've got a, a possible solution. And this is, I don't think anybody will uh, put this into effect just because it would take legislature to like pass laws for it. But I would say that you get one call per year. If you, you know, have a, your phone go off in your pocket or something like that. It's an accident. We get that, whatever. Um, you do it again, though, you're going to get a fine. And uh, once it starts hitting people's pockets, they're like, okay, I got to be more careful about this. Oh, well, you have to pay for 911 calls. Yeah. Well, I mean, you do anyway. Ooh. Everybody gets charged. If you've got a phone, you get charged $1 per month. Like every phone right. is like that. Right. So, but, but we but don't if, even notice those. I didn't even know I got charged $1 per month, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah. Look on your cell phone bill. Every, like, every <laughs> single phone. In America, has a one dollar per month charge, and that's for I didn't know that. Prices. I didn't yeah. know that. And I do know, like, uh, like even if you don't have signal, you can still dial nine one one, right? Isn't there like a, there's like like satellites will like, or or the tower, like how does that work? Do you even do you do you know how that works? Yeah. So um, if you have a phone, period, it doesn't matter if it's a a cell phone or a, a landline, if it's still connected somewhere, like as far as a landline. You plug it in the wall. If, if you still have a connection to the pole, dial 911, even if you don't have service, it's going to work. Same thing with a, mm -hmm. a cell phone. Even if you've got like an old flip phone or something like that, and it's not been active for years and years, if you're still in cell phone tower range, you may not have a subscription to like a service. It will still ring through to 911. That's a lot of the calls that we take. Like 
parents giving like an old phone to a kid or something like that and they're playing a video game or whatever just messing around with it and they you know hold nine too long or they'll press the magic combination of side buttons or something like that to call an emergency and that happens wow. all the time <laughs> Shit. But if you were like stuck in the mountains with like literally no service, no no access to a tower whatsoever, it wouldn't work at all, right? No, that wouldn't work. No. Yeah. Austin out here, butt dial an emergency iPhone with her iPhone. <laughs> yeah. I can't I didn't believe know that there's. Common, but shit. Yeah, I don't even know how to but like I don't even know how to dial nine one one on my phone without dialing nine one one. I don't know how uh, people butt dial with their phones these days with smartphones. They 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 do it if you like hold there are certain on different carriers different phones stuff like that like I, I don't know what it is for apple but uh because i don't i don't have a you know any type of apple or iphone or anything like that i don't either yeah but if uh if you hold down like you know a certain button for a long time mm -hmm. it will call 911 or uh, okay um, i didn't know you that. know like on your lock screen if you have your phone by you right now just press press your your turn on thing so like with mine here mm -hmm. you just press the button down in the corner there is a little phone yep you press on that and it'll um now that yeah i can it's I automatic can, and i can so dial if, with it yeah yeah so if you uh press the button like you have your phone in your pocket you press that side button just to have it come on and somehow your the touch screen makes enough contact with man that's a lot yeah, yeah. that's a lot it'll that's happen. crazy that that happens that often because that's a lot of steps to go through it's crazy yeah it happens that's crazy but you know, i mean shit <laughs> i mean i don't doubt it it's just wild to me yeah what is it day in the iphone face has an emergency thing right in the middle of iphone people yeah, so it, it, yeah maybe it's have, even I've easier never had an maybe it's even easier Either. on iphone because yeah with android it's it's a lot of steps like i mean well i, I have a cover on my phone so I, like i can't even if i press this button it doesn't turn the phone on right so i have to open the cover oh, to actually... you just did i mean it turns the phone on but i can't dial anything i gotta cut like i can't press buttons i can't there's no numbers to press right you know what i mean like, I, it has press a... it. I think yeah right underneath your finger i think you might have something right there it's that's uh notifications oh, okay i got you yeah. but if i open it then of course i got the phone down here yeah and i have to drag it first i have to drag it first and now i can dial right yeah and at that point if like um sometimes you have your phone automatically set up for that being an emergency there is an emergency there call button right at the bottom that's it that's what happens <laughs> so in the chat dan clearly doesn't have toddlers mine is almost called several times yeah it's crazy my monsters thanks for coming through here oh yeah appreciate it um yeah this has been awesome man we'll definitely be having you back on here brother you're easy as hell to chat with yeah yeah oh. i'll come on anytime dude you're part of the family now yeah bro yeah, <laughs> yeah just, um, we were talking about beforehand we got the three red beards yeah so yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. i know the comments gonna be up oh, these guys are brothers they've got the th yeah. is this the third brother yeah, yeah. <laughs> or actually probably not because people didn't even know me and you were brother well, people still to this that's day true don't we even still, know me and you were brothers sometimes we still blow people's bones when they're like wait they're brothers i think we look pretty much alike <laughs> similar enough i think Amber, Android's pressed the power button five times in a row. Will that call? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, shit. I'm, I'm not going to test it, yeah. but I didn't I'll know that either. For it. That's good to know just if you're in a spot. You know what I mean? Bah, 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 now, bah, that, bah. now, that actually seems more likely that I it like would accidentally one. press the button. If you're truly in a moment, times. you need it. Yeah. Hmm. Learned some stuff here tonight. Um, so I'm going to do it one more time. Let me put his YouTube right here. Make sure you're following him. More content to come, and then also here on uh, Twitter X, follow him on there as well. Um, yeah, dude, definitely. Dan, you got anything to add, brother? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm good. Everybody tonight, thank you all so it's been much. An for awesome out. conversation tonight. This has been good, dude. I'm gonna be clipping the shit out of this. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jake, yeah, absolutely. Here. Great conversation. Um, next time you're gonna be seeing me Sunday morning, at 9 a.m. Eastern time for Murder Church Week. 20 i think we're on week 20 of the jeffrey Dahmer insanity trial i think it is week 20 yeah uh yeah make sure you come hang out 9 p 9 a.m eastern time and um uh, yeah i appreciate everybody for coming here hanging out for feral friday brandon brother thank you very much dan thank you very much ladies yeah, and gentlemen you love you guys later
Uh, See y'all. Hey, peeps. If we shoot them up, bang, bang over here, we not scared of they motherfucking ass.